Hey, problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over geometry constructions. All you need is a compass, a straight edge, and a pencil. Even though today's techniques are gonna be on paper with a compass or on wood out in the wood shop, you can also use the exact same techniques if you understand them on the job site. You could use them with string and stakes on dividing property. So use them on a floor if you're building a house, trying to figure out layouts. So they're useful all over the place, but today I'm just gonna use a compass, straight edge, and pencil. So to get started, first thing you need is a compass. It just has two points on it, and then it opens and closes. It's really nice to have a very secure one that locks into place. So here's a pencil. I'm gonna use a colored pencil here, just so it's easier to see on camera. I do have a, a ruler, but really with constructions, you're not gonna use the ruler, so I'm gonna turn it over and just use it as a straight edge. So let's start out here in the shop. I have my straight edge. And let's say I have a board like this right here and I wanna bisect this angle. Well, I mean, you could use a protractor and measure and take that number and divide it in half, but that'll actually only give you what's called an approximate measure. One of the big secrets in woodworking is actually to work with exact values, meaning ways to reproduce things without having to measure. I know it sounds contrary um, from a math teacher. Okay, so a better way to bisect an angle like this right here is to use a compass and a ge geometry construction. So this is one of our constructions. It's called bisecting an angle. The first thing you want to do is draw an arc across that angle. You're going to draw two more arcs and these are going to actually um, intersects. I'm going to draw an arc from this point here and I'm going to draw an arc from this point here and that point of intersection there is exactly in the middle of the angle so then I use my straight edge and I go from the vertex of my angle through that point of intersection and I know this right here is an angle bisector so this angle right here is congruent to this angle right here. You could use this on wood. If you try and lay out parts, you could use it on metal. You could use it in construction. Okay, now that I've done one of these out in the shop, I'll put the camera over my shoulder and I'll just work on paper. I only need three tools again, my compass, a pencil, and a straight edge, not a ruler. And then the other thing I do as well is I have quite a thick stack of paper and that gives me some padding underneath. Okay, here are six constructions right here, a copy a line segment, perpendicular bisector of a line segment, draw a line perpendicular to a line through a given point, bisect an angle, copy an angle, and constructing parallel lines. So a line segment has a starting place and an ending place. A line has arrows on each end to say it's infinite. If I want to copy a line segment for the exact same length, uh, I'm just going to start by drawing a line that's infinite or a ray that has a starting point and keeps going forever and then I'm just going to open my compass up to the existing line segment lock it in place scribe this arc across it and there's a copy of a line segment so this line segment has the same length as this line segment here. So that's our first construction. And let me just say one thing about this. Um, so in mathematics and woodworking, there's a very big difference between exact and approximate. And it has to do with significant digits uh, in science. So it's really applicable in a lot of different places. An exact value would be something like a fraction two-thirds. An approximate value would be the decimal approximation of that point, six, six, seven. But at some point, you're going to have to round. So it's a decimal approximation of that fraction. If you're a scientist, you just take this and you keep as many significant digits as you want. 
and how this translates in woodworking, the best woodworkers figure out systems to create exact values. So if you're building a table, right, and you have four legs, and they're a quarter inch longer or shorter, it doesn't make that much difference. However, if the opposing legs are a quarter inch off, the table will wobble forever. So the important part of building table legs is that when you cut them on the saw, like on a crosscut saw, that you put in a fixed stop so that every one of them is exactly the same, meaning they're identical, that you understand the ideas of exact value. Approximate value is you would take that table leg, you would measure it, cut to length off of your ruler, you would approximate the length. It doesn't matter how accurately you measure, it's still an approximation. It might be accurate to the 16th, a 32nd, a 64th, but it's still an approximation of length. When you cut two different legs off a ruler measurement, you're using approximate measuring techniques instead of exact measuring techniques. So really fine craftsmen develop systems to use exact measurements by building fixtures and jigs to reproduce um, parts so that they are identical. And that's what we're trying to do here with these geometry constructions, is learning techniques so we could develop ways to create exact measurements. Small aside there. Okay, number two is a perpendicular bisector of a line segment. This little notation right here means perpendicular, exactly 90 degrees. Bisector means in two equal parts. Segment means it has a starting point and an ending point. So the way I find a perpendicular bisector of a line segment, so I use my compass, it has to be set greater than half the distance. It doesn't matter how much more, but somewhere between the half and the full. And I hold it on one end of the line segment and I draw an arc. And I do the same thing from the other end of the line segment. And then where those points intersect, I use my straight edge and I connect those points of intersection. And this point right here is exactly in the middle of these two points. That's what makes it a bisector. That's congruent to that. And it's perpendicular as well. So that's a perpendicular bisector of a line segment. So number three, I have a line with a point on it and I wanna draw a line perpendicular through a point on that line. So the way I do that is I open my compass up to a certain amount and set it and I find points equidistant from that point on the line. So that point and that point where they intersect are points equidistant from that given point. And it kind of makes sense because a circle is all points equidistant from a given point. So now I have these two points equidistant from the point that I want to draw out the perpendicular through. So I'm going to open this up a little bit more than the halfway point like I did before. Tighten it down. Then I'm going to draw an arc here. And using the same setting on the compass, draw another arc right here. And that'll be a perpendicular line through a point on a line. And you can see how useful that's gonna be if you're doing surveying and you're trying to stay perpendicular to a property line. Or if you're building a fence and you wanna guarantee that the fence you're building is perpendicular to a back fence, that's another way to do it. Much more accurate to do it this way with stakes and string, then try and do a three, four, five triangle with the Pythagorean theorem. All right, on to number four, bisect an angle. This is the one I did out in the shop uh, on the board to show you that you could use this for laying out parts in any sort of shop. Um, but here, let me do it again on a piece of paper with my compass. I set it at my vertex. I draw my arc across both sides of the angle because that's gonna be all points equidistant from there, meaning that point is equidistant from there as that point is. Then I'm gonna draw another set of arcs right here. And where these set of arcs intersect is gonna be all points equidistant. And then now using my straight edge, I'm gonna go from the vertex through that point of intersection. 
and that's going to give me number four, my angle bisector. Okay, number five is to copy an angle or replicate an angle, kind of the same thing. First thing I want to do in copying an angle is just draw a straight line. And this is going to be the vertex where that line is. And then I'm going to draw an arc across my existing angle. So I'm going to draw an arc across this existing angle. And I'm going to draw the exact same arc right here. And then in essence, I'm really going to use my compass as a measuring device or a measuring stick. And I'm going to set the distance right here on this amount of opening. So I'm going to set it right there then lock it down and then transfer that distance right to here. So now that I've transferred that, that point of intersection uh, and the vertex will be right there and there. And I can draw that right there. And that's number five, copy an angle. This angle measure is equal to this angle measure right there. Okay, and then the last one I'll go over is constructing parallel lines, number six. There are a lot of geometry constructions. I'm just doing these six today. First thing I'm gonna do with this is just draw a line crossing this line, and I'm gonna draw my line parallel to there. And the best way to do this is actually just copy an angle measure to here. So let's say I'm gonna pick this point right there and now really all I'm going to do is create a copy and angle measure from here to here, go in the opposite direction. And then those two points will be equidistant from these two points. Um, and that'll prove parallel. So even though these are great, great tools um, for layout, it's also actually a really foundational skill in understanding geometry. And that's why it's always part of a, a traditional geometry class. Also a big part of drafting as well. So I'm going to draw this arc right here. Draw that exact same arc off of this point on my transversal. Then I'm going to measure this opening here. And you could say, well, that's the exact same thing as an angle copy. And it is. And that's kind of the point of these things. Once you figure them out, you're just going to find more and more uses of them. So I'm going to draw that measure here. So again, I just transferred this arc up to here, then measured this opening and transferred it to there. And then I'll draw these two line, a line through these two points, point of intersection, and the point I drew on that line. And now I have a set of parallel lines. Parallel lines are usually denoted with like double arrows. Uh, it is in fact the way a lot of people lay projects out on property. All right, so those are our six geometry constructions used in geometry class, used in any shop, um, used out in the field on a lot of different job sites. And I'm sure um, you might use them in different capacities out on a job site. And if you do, please let me know in the comments below. If you're new to this channel, think about subscribing. This channel is Practical Math. I appreciate you watching. Thank you.